Hello and welcome. Today's quick video is going to be about the new changes in the user interface to Skyrider Foxtrot version 1.6. Uh, this version is 1.6.13, the one that was released on uh, February 22nd of 2023. So let's get into it. Um, first thing you'll notice is in the auxiliary button stack, how they begin to organize. Uh, in prior versions, the uh, auxiliary button stacks, the different options would sort of um, build up on top. And in order to make some more room for mobile, I switched it to building off to the side. So as you enable different aspects and different features within the auxiliary button stack and others, uh, you'll see they'll, they build out to another uh, stack to the side uh, onto the left rather than on top. So as I demonstrate here, I'll turn on the traces, uh, the auto refresh is already on, um, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, that's sort of the first major change in the user interface. A um, few other changes while we're uh, in the bottom right hand corner of the main stack um, gave a little bit more prominent placement to the UI uh, scale handle which are these two arrows here. It used to be a really tiny uh, button to the right of the refresh. Uh, so I want to give that a little bit, make it easier to, to grab while you're on mobile. Um, let's see, we've reorganized a few of the different buttons um, to make it a little bit more intuitive as far as uh, the groupings. So now the location chooser is sort of with the maps panel and the map uh, and the uh, vertical sliders uh, grouping here. Um, the lists are kind of all ganged up on this second area. So now we have the type list panel, the watch list, and then this is your favorite places um, uh, toggle there, uh, which you're familiar with that. And uh, let's see, then we have um, a new feature, um, this traffic grapher, and that will automatically populate as you're in uh, auto refresh mode. Um, so let me turn the auto refresh down a little bit so you can see this happen more quickly. We'll go to one second and you'll see we've got this uh, graph which shows uh, the different types, military, mask, standard, and um, the total count. And you can see that's going to uh, go over time. So basically every auto refresh cycle is going to add another data point to this graph. Okay, and this graph, if you grab the handle, you can move it around on your screen and it is resizable. Okay, so let me uh, to close that down. Uh, Got to refresh back to something more normal. Okay, um, the last thing we've done besides uh, reorganized or basically resized some of these buttons again for mobile just to make it a little bit more uh, easy to press and find with a finger rather than a mouse. Um, but we've got another new feature here which is on the top. Uh, this basically tells you how old your last refresh was, meaning how old is the data on the screen. Um, and let me turn off the auto refresh and so we can see this change. So basically what happens is um, every time that you, you know, pull a refresh or pull a, uh, a search, that's going to update and then start counting up, uh, basically telling you the age of that uh, return. Oh, let me turn off auto refresh again. There we go. And depending on the length of your auto refresh timing, uh, when you get out to three times that amount, then that number is going to turn red. So basically, it's going to give you an indication of you know how reliable is this data that you're looking at on the screen, uh, how old is it, etc. If you're in time travel mode, then that will tell you basically how many minutes um, is separated from now. Uh, so if you go yesterday, you know it'll show you. A, you know, a few thousand minutes or, you know, many hours um, that the data is actually older. Uh, and you'll see this turns from uh, blue to a yellow and then to a red uh, as this ages. So it gives you a little indicator of how fresh your data is. All right. Uh, that covers the bottom right hand corner. Uh, the top right hand corner, we've added a new toggle for the heads up display. So if you notice as I, as I mouse around and we get the uh, aircraft detail that pops up above the aircraft, we're not seeing it in the top right hand corner HUD because that's disabled right now. So you just click on that uh, toggle button and then as you mouse around then you'll get all that date, 
detail again. Again, this was just to make some more room for mobile uh, in case you needed to, you know, scale up your, your UI like so, then it's not, you know, getting too crowded. All right. And that are the major, those are the major changes for uh, the desktop version. Let me quickly pop over to the um, mobile version and show you the detail there. Please ignore this, uh, this handle. That's just necessary for me to get a recording of it. Um, so as I move with my mouse, uh, or sorry, with my touch, uh, basically the touches are the same. Uh, you can think of as for, you know, analogous to mobile. One touch will move, translate the um, map around. Uh, two touch will give you, you know, pinch will give you the zoom. And if you use three fingers, then that elevates up and down. Um, can't obviously see my my touches on the screen, but you'll get the idea. Um, how you activate the rotation is with this auto, I'm sorry, with the uh, auxiliary button stack uh, and collapsing the menu here. This bottom corner, let me give you a highlight. All right, this button here collapses the user interface. And when that's collapsed, then you have, when you tap into the bottom right-hand corner, about the last uh, bottom 25%, then when you tap there, you get this on-screen joystick, joystick, which gives you the ability to rotate around. All right? And then that uh, hides when you release your, your finger. Uh, so basically anywhere in this, in this bottom right-hand corner, as you tap, uh, it's going to show up. All right, and then uh, there's a few things that are not enabled on the mobile version, the grapher uh, in particular. Uh, that will come later, but I just want to make sure that we work out all the bugs on desktop before we push it out to mobile. And uh, one other feature that you'll notice when you ch open up your location chooser, we have an extra button here. Uh, right here in this group, uh, we have the normal target, which rehomes to your to the uh, data that you put into this entry input box, but this will actually give you, uh, will pull the location from your device and home to there. So uh, I'm in South Florida. If I click on that, um, you'll notice that immediately the uh, interface then homes to my GPS location on my device. All right, so that's a kind of a very quick way to um, get your GPS location. Uh, into your device. Okay, I think that covers it for now. Um, hope you enjoy Skyrider Foxtrot. Have a good day. Cheers.